Hello, in this video I'm going to take you through using Shader Graph in Unity. So first you want to set up a Unity project if you already have one. Uh, you want to install through the Package Manager, that's under Windows and Package Manager. You want to install Shader Graph. And I'm just going to grab the latest version, uh, 751. You can check the dates here to see which one's the latest or use the version number. So I'm just going to install 751 and once that's installed we can get started. Okay, now that that's installed, we can simply close this panel and we want to create a shader and it's going to be one of the graph based shaders here. Not these ones, these are your code based ones, but we want a PBR graph is what we'd want to use for some materials. Okay, so with that done, I'm just going to rename this. Let's call it SG for shader graph, and we'll call this uh, vector, sorry, vertex color. Right, we're going to make a vertex color shader. So I'm going to open the shader editor, and as you can see, we've got a little bit of a pink shader issue. The active master node is not compatible with the current render pipeline, or no render pipeline is assigned. Assign the render pipeline in the graphic setting that's compatible with this master node. Okay, so don't let that worry you. Let's jump back to the scene. We should be using standard render pipeline. So what we have to do is go back to here and create a render pipeline or select the render pipeline. Let's generate shader includes just to see if that fixes it. Uh, go back into the shader graph when that's done. Okay, open shader editor, not that. Back out into are here and let's just go to the project settings render pipeline none okay and you see there's no option for any rendering type setup. So let's go back to the package manager and we're going to look for render pipeline core or core RP library and let's just also get the same version. Okay that's already installed. Now there's the choice of lightweight render pipeline and high definition render pipeline. So I guess we have to choose one of these. Okay, after a little bit of reading up, we have the choice of universal render pipeline or high definition render pipeline. Lightweight render pipeline is kind of old now, so it seems to be that universal render pipeline is overtaking. But anyway, let's just go for this one. We're going to install 751 and assign that to the graphics renderer and hopefully everything's good. Okay, so that's installed and then I'm going to create a rendering universal render pipeline and I guess go for a forward renderer. Okay, and if I go into the project settings 
and choose one of those. Seems to be fine now. And it looks like that's got rid of the exclamation mark there. We're seeing the preview and we're good to go. Okay, so we're gonna make a vertex color based shader. Now, when you look at Shader Graph, it has this output panel, and these would be any sort of properties that you want to be able to control via a material. So first, let's just save this asset. And then I'm gonna right click this Shader Graph and do Create Material. Let's call this SG Matte Test. Right, I'm gonna to go to the scene. I'll create a sphere. And I'm gonna drag the mat test over to that. And there we go. So now I can go back to the graph editor, open the editor, and if we want, just have two tabs here. And instead of seeing this one, shall minimize put up here somewhere okay that seems kind of organized right so I want something to control the color now you can see the colors obtained by this just little swatch which you can only really change in the shader graph itself but we want to be able to change the actual material here I'm just going to lock this so we can see what's happening so you want to create a color and we call this base color it's going to have a default of white and we're going to save the asset and drag this out and connect it into albedo so now this property which is white is going to be what actually affects the final color so if we save this and we change the color here you can change it to any color and all via the usual material parameters Okay, let's say we want to play with vertex color. So I'm going to create a node and type in vertex color. Okay, now vertex color is color information that's already in the mesh. You can paint vertex colors in any 3D application such as Max, Maya or Blender and many other things like ZBrush. So what I'll do is I'll plug this into the albedo instead. And by default, the vertex color of a mesh is white. So if I save this, most of this is just going to be white until I do any sort of painting in here. In order to paint vertex color inside Unity, we might need an extra, uh, an extra package. So one that could work is Pro Builder. So I'm just going to check the package manager and look for Pro Builder. There's also Poly Brush mesh painting, sculpting. Let's have a look at polybrush. This sounds interesting. I've never tried Pro Builder or Polybrush, but it would be nice to be able to paint just inside Unity. Okay, so Polybrush looks like it's been installed. Now we just have to find the tools for it. Polybrush window. And here we go. So I'm gonna drag this just down here. And let's see what we got. Sculpt on meshes, smooth mesh geometry, paint vertex colors on meshes. This sounds exactly what we need. So now I should be able to paint some kind of color on this. So it doesn't look like any of the materials on this object support vertex colors. Yet this one does. I've got vertex color here. Let me just make sure I save this. Overwrite that and I'm 
Oh, there we go. Took a while for the brush to appear, but now we've got that working. Let's make the brush size a good bit smaller. And there we go, and I'm just going to change to green. And as you can see, I'm painting the verts a certain color. So each vertex that gets painted, it will interpolate its way to the next vertex. So the definition of this paint is only coming through based on the number of verts in the mesh. This is a handy way of painting some nice base colours or adding some fake shadows to any kind of object that you have. Okay, so that only happens because we've got the vertex colour going into the albedo channel here. If you did have a base colour for everything, and you want to go between the vertex color and the base color, we could put an alert node. Alert is just a kind of way of switching between two things, kind of like having two records, one on the left and one on the right, A being the left and B being the right. And this T value that goes between zero and one is the control that's gonna show us whether we see this side or that side. So I'll just make up a value using a vector one and call this uh, blender. We'll change the mode to a slider and bring that in here, connect it up. And because it's a property when I save the asset, it's gonna appear here. And now I should be able to go between. I may have to come out of this tool though Ah, there's one thing that I forgot to do. Because this is still plugged directly into Albedo, this is not having any effect until I plug it in. Now, when I save it, we now have the option to go between the base color and vertex color. This can also work if it's a texture. If you have a texture loaded in, in order to create a texture, let's add one here, texture 2D, and we'll just call this our texture. The default texture you can give, but we don't need that. So I'm just gonna drag this in here. And I'm gonna drag this out and type in text and go for sample texture 2D, the second one from the bottom. And what I'm going to do is multiply. So right click and do create node multiply this with the result of this. So the colors either from the vertex or the base color. And that's been multiplied by the texture. Then I can multiply that, multiply that into, uh, connect that into the albedo output. I'm going to save the asset. It's now expecting a texture. There's a default particle. And we can see what that looks like. Maybe it's a good idea to change to a cube. we change the blender it's gone from pink to white white because this object hasn't had any vertex painting yet and it's been multiplied by this grayscale value I can change this to something else like a checker here and now 
it's the checker color been multiplied by this color or the vertex color which I can paint So you can see that you can tint the texture with the vertex color or go back to the blended color or somewhere in between. So that will do it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, I'll go into something more complicated where you can use the vertex color to control other things and other textures and create a kind of mix. So thanks for watching this video. I will see you in the next one. Bye.